before the playoffs begin, we have to go through the Western play-ins, where seven teams battle it out in a mostly double elim bracket to decide which two are the best of the mid remaining and get to play on land in Toronto. So let us commence hating on the Washington Justice, who went from having a pretty decent start to the season to having only one win in the second half. Alpha Yee's MVP case isn't even making it to court anymore, bro. Get amazed into the lawyer, and instead of helping him fight the system, he's baby raging on Twitter, calling his players' performance pathetic and undeserving of anything. This is crazy because not only did he make the sandwich, but he's been enjoying it all year he cannot be upset about teru's incompetence on baptiste when we've seen it all season and apparently bringing in dong hun for fd god was a more important roster change than making sure your only flex support can actually play all the heroes within the role alpha yi is out here trying to 1v9 every game and he gets rewarded with ben best playtime and mirror fumbling around on ana somewhere along the way they lost sight that alpha yi is literally the entire team and even though he is very good at bastion and torb if bro isn't on something like genji where he can just solo team wipe they stand zero chance even with flora chipping in with consistent first picks every other aspect of this team is so tragic it's just doomed the new york excelsior continue to invest every resource they have into experimental cloning procedures to get another fits his iliari has been map defining every time he breaks it out even when the rest of his team is in shambles around him. The problem with the Excelsior isn't that anyone is especially awful, but rather everyone other than Fitz has been simply all right. It's not a bad meta for anyone either. The whole roster gets to play heroes that they're comfortable on, or at least in the case of Kellen, he can't bring the team down on Orisa. The remaining teams in this bracket just have a specific identity that makes them stronger, whether it be London, Vancouver, or Toronto's commitment to team strengths and synergy, Boston being a more talented team outright, or San Francisco having proper on the roster. The London Spitfire are an absolutely terrifying team in these play-ins. The Rhine Rush is no joke, and if their opponent can't figure out a way to break it or their Arisa variant, the Spitfire have a real chance to find some upsets. Sparker has looked great at whatever he needs to pull out in any situation, whether it be the Sim or Bastion, and anytime Backbone gets to play May, May, and some more May, it is nothing but a win. Not to mention Hottie on his guy and Landon being one of the best BAPs in the game. On the other hand, if the enemy does familiarize themselves with their game and learn how to dismantle them, it is over and there is nothing they can do except pack their bags early. That's the reason why going to map five against Houston isn't all it seems to be. Now they're facing more prepared teams who will have map picks. They are quite literally matchup fishing to make playoffs and I respect it. I mean, it's a lot better than what most other teams have to offer. The San Francisco Shock genuinely looked pretty decent for the first time this season. I don't know how Max convinced Junbin to cover the rest of his Bonchon chicken shifts while Orisa is viable, but it is paying dividends. Now that Max doesn't have to split his attention filling fry baskets, he's been a real impact player like he was supposed to be all year. Something similar must have happened for Renko to be playing Lucio. Either Luke makes a mean Bulgogi and he got promoted to a supervisory position within the Bonchon Chan chain of command, or all it takes to make it to the lobby is a cheery smile and a good mental outlook. Shock are at least a little scary just because of the proper factor alone. It doesn't matter if he's on Bastion, Genji, Ilyari, or whatever else, he gives Shock a chance to win no matter how slim. The Toronto Defiant are the most overhyped team in the league. I do not care that Kaluj is cool as a cucumber on Sigma, or that Sermajed looks like the best Ilyari that isn't a DPS player, provided we ignore that he has the worst alt usage that Owl has ever seen. Hydron has a very unique take on Soldier that involves being a Toronto street rat in real life. He is 15 kilometers away doing two damage per shot and is still yapping like he's hosting a podcast the entire fight. The Defiant's commitment to hard poke make them a scary team and they can look dominant, but they don't always look good. And with map picks involved, they definitely can't afford to lose any to bad C9s or because they just don't want to play Lucio. They're more likely to crash and burn than Orisa boosted GM tanks after this Zarya buff. If they come third here, they'll miss the playoffs and fulfill 
fulfill their destiny by being true mid at the end of Owl as we know it. The Vancouver Titans are betting the entire net worth of their franchise on two rookie DPS players hard carrying them. They need Sugar Free to kill five with every single nano blade. They need He Sang to have even more hate in his heart stored up against Krusty and the Shock for murdering his rookie of the year campaign before he could even put up posters. Sure, the synergy with this team is still there, but Punk and Crimzo have just been all right, and seeing Faith on Bastion has made me go to church and pray that I never have to experience anything as awful as that. It does not matter if that was a real strategy or not. If Faith is so bad at flex support that we even have to question it, nothing more can be done. It is over. The Boston Uprising are the clear favorites to make it out of here. If you pulled all the other teams in these play-ins together and made a super roster just to face Boston, I am still picking the Uprising to win it all. Twilight, Izayaki, and Lee Jae Gon as a backline run circles around everybody else and it isn't close. By some miracle, rush comps aren't even a weakness anymore because Smurf's Junker Queen has been phenomenal. But it doesn't end there either. They're still the team to beat, even if this was a soccer game. Nobody dives like them. No one else even tries to. And with map picks factoring into the equation, that is a massive advantage. The biggest weakness currently is the DPS line. Murdering Soldier and Sojourn haven't lit the world on fire. And anytime Decay isn't on Tracer, I just think of what could be. Plus, they still are Boston, and they could just decide they'd rather be sleeping and throw the match like in the midseason madness. If this team somehow flops when it matters most, they'll be throwing their hat into the ring for biggest letdowns of the year and that says a lot because there is some serious competition this time around. These play-ins are shaping up to be a very exciting two weeks and I can't help but feel like something devious is brewing behind the scenes. I just don't know what. My picks to make it through are Boston and Toronto. It's lame and there's undoubtedly some Toronto fan bias there but I do not care. Anyway thanks for watching. Subscribe for more pro overwatch content. Have yourself a good one. Deuces.